Hi guys, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. I want to show you how to do a very, very basic watercolor chart where you can put all of your paint tube colors on a piece of paper like this. I used Holbein, paint, um, Holbein paints and then Arches watercolor paper. And I used a very large size and I marked off the number of tubes that I have, which I think I have around 90, maybe 100 now. And then I lined up my Holbein paints in numerical order. And I also put in the name or the number of each of these paints inside of this square. And when it's, this watercolor chart is done, I can easily look at my paints. What paints do I have on hand? What does that color look like? And I can decide for each painting which paints I want to use and I need to put on my palette. So this is, like I said, very simple. And inside of each square, I have uh, a darker amount of paint or more concentrated paint on the left-hand side. The right-hand side of that square, I try to leave it where it's a little bit more watery because I want to see what the paint looks like thick and I want to see what it looks like thin. And I'm not going to say that all of mine are pretty on this chart, but it's there. So, <laughs> um, so it's very valuable to make watercolor charts. When you look at watercolor tubes, the paint inside does not always reflect very well what's on the outside of it. And making a chart allows me to see the paint in its pure form and I can decide whether I want to use cool tones or warm tones. That's blue tones or um, yellow tone paints. Um, I'm able to look at it, I'm able to select if I want five colors in a palette, I can look at uh, what matches best with each other. Sometimes I choose paints based off what, what's uh, matched up inside of um, the painting that I'm doing. So anyway, I would just wanna check and see where we're at with this video. I'm continuing to go through. I have greens, blues, violets, yellows, oranges, reds, pinks, and then I'm gonna wind up with a separate section that has my Arches watercolor paint. So right now, I'm totally on Holbein, and I'm putting a little bit of water on all of these squares first, and then I put the paint on it and I kind of let it run um, and do its own thing. So I'll do a whole section on Holbein and keep it to itself. Then I'm going to do a section on the bottom right hand side of the paper and those paints are American Journey. I love those as well. I'm venturing out and trying different uh, paints and a watercolor chart gives me the opportunity for me to see uh, what these other paints look like. And Holbein, for example, it's more pure. It does not have a lot of additives in it. Other paints might. Uh, American Journey is pretty good. I don't need to add much into it, but um, they all have a different feel to them. And for me to put them on a watercolor chart, it's very valuable. So <clears throat> I'm finishing up on my Holbeins. There's some silver, some golds that are in here. Then I'm going to do my American Journey paints. And then after that, I've got some new iridescent and uh, different types of gold and copper. And I'm trying to remember what else, um, not silver. Um, so here I am on my American Journeys. And these colors, they're completely different than my Holbeins. And I love them. I can see myself doing a lot of seascapes with these colors. And I kind of buy paints according to what I uh, want to paint. Um, and what I'm looking for, anyway, what I'm looking for, I'm so partial on my colors. And I, my Holbein paints, I bought a set, it was 70 paint tubes in it. Um, and I'm really glad I bought it, they're very small tubes. So here's my finished chart, and then I'll go back in and I'll write the name of the paints inside of these squares. So that's it for today. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.